You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks, and today joining me is guest upgrader, Jamie Block. Hello, it's been a while. Glad to yeah. be back in the chair. Welcome back. You're upgrading the brand new uh, Dustborn House of Horror Esper deck. This one's called Miracle Worker. Uh, we're going to get into 10 cards you can add to this deck to get it in peak fighting shape. We're going to tell you the 10 cards you can take out to make room for them. And we're going to go over what comes in the box when you buy it off the shelf. Reprint value, all the stats, everything that you need to know when you're buying or upgrading this deck. But before we get into any of that, if you want to pick up this precon or any of the cards that we talk about in this episode, go over to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has a huge selection of single Singles and sealed product. When you're building a new deck, it's nice to shop in one place, order a ton of the cards all on one website, and then you're waiting for one envelope to show up in the mail. Plus, when it arrives, you know those cards are going to arrive safe and sound because they've been packaged professionally with a little token and a sticker and a packing peanut in a padded envelope. They're the best. I've never had a card show up in anything less than exactly the condition I ordered it in on the website. We trust Card Kingdom here with our our cards you should too over at cardkingdom.com slash command supports the show. You can go over to our other affiliate link once you have those cards in your hand. Go to ultrapro.com slash command to get all of the highest quality magic accessories in the business. Get some sleeves, some binders, some deck boxes. If you are into Duskmorn, if you're like, thank goodness Bloomboro is over, you're into ghouls and ghosts and cool spooky stuff, Duskmorn is here and has some very cool new merchandise. Check out the playmats, the sleeves, the deck boxes. They've even been doing like a higher tier of sleeves uh, that are apex sleeves themed around different sets. So check for that if you're a big fan of Duskmore. And Apex Leaves are the very, very best. And we've had uh, really enjoyed using them here in the office. Plus, if you sign up for their newsletter, you'll stay abreast of all of the sales that happen. So if you're picking up a ton of sleeves in one place, if you want to pick up a bunch of deck boxes all at one time, you can do it while they're on sale. Again, ultrapro.com slash command is a great way to support the show. You can also do it directly by going to patreon.com slash command zone. That's where you go to become a patron to to get special perks for in our community. You get access to game nights and extra turns a day early without ads. Nice. Uh, plus, you get to hang out in the Discord, talk to the people here on the staff. Um, Josh, Jimmy, me, all of our team members talk about this upgrade and every episode that we put out. It's a fun community to be a part of. So sign up for our Patreon. We appreciate it so much. Uh, plus, we shout out one lucky patron every single podcast episode. And this one is dedicated to... Juan Ochoa. Ochoa. Juan, you rock. All right, let's get into it. We are upgrading the Miracle Worker Precon. This is Esper. It's white, it's blue, it's black. Uh, we're going to get to know this deck off the shelf before we do any changes to it. And I think the best way to get to know what's in the box is to get to know the face commander. Yes. So the face commander is Aminatu Shebek. Nice. Uh, in the form of Aminatu Veil Piercer. Uh, it's one and a white, blue, and a black. Uh, for a legendary human wizard, 2-4, uh, uh, she says, at the beginning of your upkeep, surveil 2, and each enchantment card in your hand has miracle. Its miracle cost is equal to the mana cost reduced by 4 generic. Mm. Remind us what miracle is for those who haven't played during miracles. So miracle is uh, an additional cost, or not an additional cost, an alternate cost. Right that a card can have that you can pay to cast the spell the moment you draw it if it's the first card you drew that turn. Right. So, so it when, ignores timing restrictions as long as it's the first card you've drawn on any turn. You be cast it in your draw step or whenever you draw a card on your opponent's turns. Exactly. It sort of forces, you know, if this is the commander that you're going with in this deck, uh, you got to be real careful every time you're drawing your first card per turn. Don't Put it in the rest of your hand. Don't invite that accusation of cheating. <laughs> Make sure that you draw it, acknowledge whether it's something you can miracle or not, and then put it in your hand if you're not casting it. And if it is a miracle, you do legally have to say, it's a miracle! That's true. That's part That's of the comprehensive rule rules. <laughs> <laughs> so this is interesting. I mean, this is Esper enchantments with a little bit of top deck manipulation and a lot of big enchantments is what I would guess is in the 99 of this deck. Yeah, it skews the curve really high because right. you want to get that feeling like you're really getting value off that that miracle cost and that means mm -hmm. you want enchantments you know to get that 
sort of those endorphins mm -hmm. that have at least three, ideally four more generic mana in the cost, and that means they're costing at least four plus. Uh, worth noting that Aminatu is no longer a planeswalker here. Um, in case you only know her as a planeswalker, she's just she's just a creature. Yep, she's uh, just a regular kid. Totally on. regular. <laughs> no overpowered magical abilities in the lore whatsoever. Can't think of one. Uh, some interesting rules things with this uh, with this alternate miracle cost that we were talking about before this episode is because the way Aminatu is worded, it says each enchantment card in your hand has miracle. Its miracle cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by four. So that alter, like, alters the mana cost on the card when you reveal it. Yeah, it creates an alternate cost. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, you know, I mean, you can imagine other cards with Miracle, how it just has a separate cost down at the bottom of the card. Mm -hmm. That's like, you can cast it for this, a lot like Flashback or something like right. that. Uh, so what Aminatu is doing is not actually changing or reducing the mana cost in the corner. Uh, and sort of the main case that this can come up in and work unintuitively is uh, X spells. Right. There aren't that many enchantments with X in their mana cost within mm -hmm. uh, this color identity, but notable ones certainly include uh, the Meat Hook Massacres 1 and 2. Oh, my favorite <laughs> movie series. Uh, yeah, you can't reduce that casting cost because the it gives you an alternate cost that's still just black, black X. It tries to reduce the cost, but it sees nothing to reduce. Yeah, that, that reduce by four really means it has to be looking for kind of a digit, a number in the cost, and X is not a digit it knows what to do with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know how to reduce that by four when creating a new cost, so it just doesn't. And this is also relevant with the backup commander. So let's read uh, this creature as well. Yeah, we've got the Master of Keys, who costs X and Esper, so X, white, blue, black, for a legendary enchantment creature, Horror. Uh, it's a 3-3 with flying. Uh, when it enters, you put X-1-1 one, one counters on it and mill twice X cards. Sweet. Uh, and then each enchantment card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. That's interesting. So this is a enchantment graveyard commander that allows you to fill up your graveyard and get a huge selection of enchantments and sort of recur enchantments, either like enchantments with sack abilities maybe, or um, just get a huge selection if you're using your graveyard. Yeah, all the things like the seals that just sort of yeah. sack themselves to do the things Seems that sort good, of an yeah. instant or sorcery would normally do are great. And then, yeah, just sort of cheap enchantments that mill yourself. You know, maybe they can mill anyone, but if they do, target yourself when you get the chance. Uh, just to fill that graveyard, and it can really be sort of a toolbox situation of mm -hmm. I've filled my graveyard with a ton of different enchantments, and whichever one helps me in the bind that I'm currently in, I have access to all of them. Yeah, he's got all the keys on his key ring. Uh, the Master of Keys does. Yep. Uh, this is an interesting combination of commanders. Clearly, they're both enchantress commanders, um, and Aminatu is doing some amount of self-mill with this surveil ability. But while Aminatu is good with like big enchantments and manipulating the top of your library, the Master of Keys is sort of better with smaller enchantments and dumping a bunch into the graveyard. So they're very different commanders, even though they're both like Esper Enchantress. Yeah, that contrast really shines a light on the fact that this deck out of the box is built around the face commander. It is built around Aminatu, mm -hmm. the mana curve and sort of the contents within. There is some amount of graveyard stuff going on, but certainly not enough for it to feel like the Master of Keys is anything but the backup mm -hmm. in this situation. Uh, yeah, especially with the cost reduction and interaction, they're not working quite as well as we thought. Um, so we're probably going to be talking about Aminatu for most of this episode. Uh, we're going to be getting to know, let's get to know this deck a little bit more um, when you buy it off the shelf, Yeah. which uh, the first thing we always look at is the reprints in the deck. It gets to know where the deck invested its budget and sort of tells us a story of what the deck is actually doing. Uh, in this deck, we're only going to talk about the cards that are worth $5 or more. There are eight reprints that are worth $5 or more. As always, we take these values before the list is reprinted, is announced. So uh, the prices that we're using is pre-reprint prices. And those will, of course, go down once the prices are announced. Uh, excuse me. Once the reprints are announced. We got it. We're there. Um, 
let's get into it. I want to read through this list of reprints uh, so they know where we're spending our money here. Yeah. Uh, coming in first at a currently $16 card, we have wow. Extravagant Replication. Uh, this one surprised me most to sort of see that this is what the price currently is. I'm shocked by that. Uh, this is a six mana enchantment, so it makes sense that definitely points in the direction of Aminatu. Uh, the second reprint is Ink Shield sitting at $15, which is sick. That's a good win con for any defensive deck. Yeah, we've got uh, Hall of Heliod's Generosity next at $12. Very good include in the deck. Great to see it, you know... Nearly any Enchantress deck wants this card. Most of them have white in them, so you're mm -hmm. going to run it. It's great with both commanders, actually. Um, Andu Spirit Dancer is sitting at $12 right now. This is the first reprint since its original printing in uh, Commander Masters. Yeah, I think in the Anikthia precon. Yeah, I think that was the original one. Uh, then we have at uh, $8, one with the multiverse, sort of omniscience at home. Mm -hmm. And it is big. Uh, this is a great thing to miracle off the top with Aminatu. Yes. Uh, up next is Monologue Tax at $7.50. This would be your smothering tithe at home. Yep. Uh, it, a nice little value enchantment to miracle. Then at six fifty, we have Athreos Shroud Veiled, sort of an interesting recursion engine. Yeah, this is more of a creature-focused card. I guess if there's uh, enchantment creatures in the deck, then that makes this make more sense. Um, really big enchantment. Obviously, a lot of value there can protect either of your commanders if you were to pick uh, either of them. Finally, it's Sphere of Safety sitting at $6. This is a big old ghostly prison. It's perfect thing to reduce with that miracle cost from your commander. Yeah. Uh, so those are the notable reprints in the deck. Again, there are eight. We're going to move on to the total reprint value. Uh, well, I'd like to mention that these decks are currently pre-ordering around $45, $45, $50. So all of our math is going to be based on that number. And the total reprint value that we mentioned only encapsulates the 75 reprints in the deck. Doesn't include the 10 new cards, the one main set card, the 14 basic lands, or the 10 new arch enemy cards that are also in these decks. Right. We're not going to talk about them because it doesn't modify the deck mechanically, but it's a fun little bonus value that comes in this package. All of that being said, the total reprint value of this deck is... $155.75. Pretty good. Yeah. That, I love that. That's excellent. That's a huge amount of value. If you're spending $45 to pick up this deck, you're getting $3.46 worth of reprints for your $1 cash. So 346 for your bang for your buck value is very high, certainly above the average of last year, which was $2.60. So we love this. Great value in the deck. Perfectly worth picking up if this is the kind of deck you're interested in building. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That is what's in the deck financially. We're going to talk about what's in the deck mechanically, which means it's time to break down the stats. 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 Wow. Fun one. We had a very echoey stats the other day where we sort of Murph just kept going. I was like, oh. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you give that kid one inch of room. Uh huh. And he'll go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, we're going to talk about the vegetables in this deck first, the things that every deck needs to be a successful commander deck. Uh, so let's break down just the, the regular stats first. Yeah, at, uh, we have 11 pieces of ramp. Okay. Eight pieces of card draw. 10 interaction, two board wipes, 37 lands. All right. That's fairly standard. I, I think 11 ramp is probably lower than what I'd expect for a deck that is trying to cheat on mana costs. Yeah. Obviously, you're, you have ramp in the command zone with Aminatu. It's also a thing where a lot of the ramp just happens to be a little pricier mana value-wise than right. what you would sort of want in a deck with a four mana commander that then is sort of going to be part of your cost reduction engine from that point forward. Right. When I'm playing a four mana commander, I really want the two mana rocks to get that commander down on three because Aminatu is definitely a setup type commander, an engine commander, not a finisher. Yeah. I agree. Now, next, we're going to break down the more deck-specific stats. These are the ones that tell us who the deck is, what it's actually trying to do. And currently, there's five cards in the deck that are naturally miracles, so have the ability of miracles, which makes sense with Aminatu. She's always been sort of miracle-themed. 
There are 10 top of library fixing cards, so ways to manipulate which card is on top. Makes a lot of sense with miracles. There are 25 enchantments, which honestly seems a little low for yeah. decks that are trying to hit enchantments. We've talked about the 30 is the magic number idea yeah. of if there's the thing your deck cares about, have 30 of them. 25 is kind of the bare minimum. Yeah. And then there's 17 cards that care specifically about enchantments. Enchantments matter cards. So that's clearly what this deck is doing, is just having a lot of enchantments and getting payoff that way. But you don't get a great idea for how the deck is actually uh, winning the game or what exactly the engine is yeah. from these stats. So we're going to get in a little bit deeper. And after doing some gold fishing, you've determined some of the cards that are just the best cards to have in your hands. The one that really feel um, like they help the deck get into a winning position. Yeah. Or in this case, sort of the best cards you have on top of your library at the exact right time. That too. Uh, the first one is Shark Typhoon. We know it. We love it. Uh, six mana uh, for a blue enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you make an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's mana value, or you can cycle it for X1 and a blue to make an X1, XX blue shark creature token with flying. There's a lot of things to like about Shark Typhoon. First of all, it's a great thing to Miracle off the top. Second of all, it's a great payoff for all your high mana value enchantments. And it can trigger uh, it trigger Miracle on your opponent's turns if you cycle it. Yeah, it is a pretty literal triple threat in mm -hmm. this deck for all those things. And it just creating that sort of value engine of, you know, this is on the board. You've miracled it the previous turn. Mm. Uh, your next miracle opportunity, it's a five drop that you get to pay one for. You're paying one for a five mana value spell and a five five flyer. That mm -hmm. is just an incredible value to be getting off of something in a deck that sort of, you know, I'll say a lot of the five mana or so enchantments in this deck are not necessarily acting as a win con on their own. The fact that this turns them into having a win con as part of their mechanic mm -hmm. is much needed. Yeah. Uh, Shark Typhoon, definitely that kind of card. It's doing so much work here. Uh, the next one that you mentioned is a new card. This is Soaring Lightbringer. It's four and a white for an enchantment creature, Glimmer, Bird Glimmer. Glimmer is a new uh, creature type in Duskmorn. It's sort of like essence of thing. Yeah, I think they, they sort of guide the survivors and give mm. hope and possibly also have a bit of a Patronus element going oh. on. Uh, so it is flying. It says other enchantment creatures you control have flying. Whenever you attack a player, create a 1-1 one, one white glimmer enchantment creature token that's tapped and attacking that player. It itself is a 4-5. So this thing's uh, beefy. Is a 5 mana 4-5 flying that gives all of the tokens it makes flying. Yeah, the fact that this gives just sort of all your enchantment creatures, which we get a handful of flying, great. And just the fact that it triggers per player, like that's a key thing to know, mm -hmm. sort of often this kind of wording can be confusing. Uh, it triggers once per player, so if you attack each opponent in the same combat, you are getting three glimmers, one going at each of them. Mm -hmm. All so, that flying. Exactly. So they're, you know, often they're just not going to get blocked. Uh, so this can, you know, it's not the fastest growing snowball in the world, but it can create a snowballing win con of just more and more one ones with flying that, mm -hmm. you know, really add up over time. I mean, there's a lot that's great here is it makes enchantment tokens. So it's really good with um, like constellation stuff. It, may, it could hypothetically make three enchantment tokens a turn. That means if you have other constellation stuff, you're drawing multiple cards, you're making more tokens. It can be a real engine piece in addition to a threat. Yeah, uh, it cool. seems really good. There's a lot of, you know, uh, it's a thing where because it's the main set is coming out, you know, in addition to Constellation, we now have Eerie, mm -hmm. uh, which gets the same. There's a ton of great sort of Eerie trigger cards that are especially good with something like this that are definitely worth looking at uh, in terms of the Enchantress stuff that we're getting in this deck. All right, so that's what's in the deck off the shelf. If you pick it up, all of those things are really going for it. We're going to talk about what our goals are to take this deck to the next level, make it work a little bit better before we get into the actual upgrade. So first, we've chosen Aminatu. We're definitely doing Aminatu as the commander. Yes, and it was close. Mm -hmm. If you showed me these two cards in a vacuum... I would pick the Master of Keys, personally. I think right. that sort of the brew from scratch version of Master of Keys, I find it more fun. I do think that sort of with just with the cards that exist in Magic, the mm -hmm. current sort of high mana value enchantments in Esper, 
there aren't quite as many that do a big, cool game-winning thing as you just might expect there to be, mm -hmm. whereas sort of this value low to the ground Master of Keys plan is a little more potent. Yeah. But this deck was built around Aminatu, so if we're doing a 10-card swap, you know, Master of Keys asks a lot of you. It asks for the win cons. It asks for the self-mill. It asks for the low mana value stuff. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get there with 10 cards, whereas Aminatu, the deck is built around it, and while it needs a bit of help, you know, I we can get there mm -hmm. with 10 cards. All righty. So uh, we've got a couple of things that we want to do to help this deck get there. What were your goals with these 10 cards? Yeah, my goals, you know, number one is card draw. Yep. That number was pretty low. Mm -hmm. And specifically, card draw that's going to let us take advantage of Miracle more often. Miracle is the first card you draw each turn. It doesn't matter if it is your own. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the card draw that is currently in the deck is... Uh, is not necessarily going to do that. A bunch is, you know, mm -hmm. a fair amount is, but really making that consistent instead of sort of these one-off instant speed card mm -hmm. draw spells. Uh, and then really just kind of giving it more power to close out the game. It's It just doesn't have it a ton. We sort of, I feel the cards that we covered for best cards in the deck are sort of far and away mm -hmm. the best chances that you have of doing that unless the game goes exceedingly long or you're very lucky with your ink shield. Yeah, like even Extravagant Replication, which is the big money-making enchantment, right? It's six six mana, it's 18 bucks or something like that. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of another target non-land permanent you control. That's a slow engine, and it's like you can make more of your Shark Typhoons, but that doesn't actually trans like transfer all of this value into actual damage or winningness. Yeah, there are a lot of things that are just sort of, for lack of a better word, clunky mm -hmm. uh, in the deck. And while they do something that's interesting, they just don't necessarily do something that's game winning. Sure. Um, up next, something that we talked about is the deck is really focused on these big enchantments, but it doesn't do a lot to defend its actual life total. It doesn't have a ton of board presence in terms of don't attack me. We mentioned one, uh, there's the sphere of safety is in the deck, but it doesn't really substitute for just having creatures. And with the deck as is, that's unlikely to come down before turn five. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of ramp to get Amanatu before turn four. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're lucky enough to miracle the sphere of safety, that was turn five anyway, because it's the turn after Amanatu. Right. So yeah, just making sure that you aren't kind of already dead by the time your deck starts doing the thing. Uh, seems like a pretty important base to cover. For sure. Uh, all right, that's our goal for this deck. That's where the direction we're trying to take it with the upgrade. We're going to get into the exact 10 cards we're adding and the 10 cards to take out after a few words from our sponsors. Listen up, flesh bags. You're in the domain of the Lord of Pain. The Lord of Pain less for high quality audio, that is, with Raycon wireless earbuds. Look, it can be torture finding things in life that just work how they're supposed to. So when my coffee makers on the fritz or my Iron Maiden get stuck shut, I throw them in the pit. But you know what never causes a fuss like that? Raycon's best-selling everyday earbuds. They just work, and Raycon keeps making them better and easier than ever. Their new multi-point connectivity lets me pair with two devices at once, so I can switch seamlessly from listening to the screams from the rack on my phone to the crunching of black vice on my laptop. With Raycons, managing my Razorkin empire has never been simpler. The optimized gel tips keep my ears comfy while I spread discomfort, and with a 32-hour battery life, they could last even longer than my victims. <laughs> Stop the fuss. Go to buyraycon.com slash command today to get 20 to 50% off site-wide. That's right. You'll get up to 50% off everything on Raycon's website when you go to buyraycon.com slash command. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. Sorry I'm late. I had to re-sleeve. Oh, your decks are looking cool. Oh yeah, I've been loving this new Mana 8 line from Ultra Pro. These Apex sleeves are literally the best shuffle feel I've ever had. And it keeps my cards safe while repping my favorite color, red. I'll do you one better. I'm showing my devotion to my favorite color, white, with the Alcove Edge deck box. Ooh. It's got the symbol on the front and also a cool stylized interior pattern. Nice. But I think I got you both beat. I've got the Apex sleeves, the Alcove deck box, the padded binder, and this sleek stitch playmat, all in my favorite color. Josh, that's green. 
you play blue. Ah, but with this setup, they won't know that ahead of time. They'll see this big, bold tree, and they'll think, Josh has turned over a new leaf. Yeah, you're not fooling anyone. People will know. Everybody knows you play blue. No, they don't. Hey, Murph. Yeah. What color is Josh playing? Blue. See? Yeah, but he didn't even see all my stuff. Keep your cards safe and stylish with the Mana 8 accessory line from Ultra Pro. Choose from six stunning designs that let you show off or disguise your favorite colors and magic, all while keeping your collection secure and protected. Go to ultrapro.com slash command to get your hands on their premium Apex sleeves, along with deck boxes, playmats, binders, and more. Support the show and rep your colors with Mana 8 at ultrapro.com slash command. You browsing for some new tech? Yeah, I'm building Team Out and Architect. Ooh, how about Zergo and Ojitai? Did you just drag and drop that card image directly into your deck? Yep, with Architect, you can drag and drop card images from EDH Rec or Scryfall directly into the deck list. No typing required. That is so cool. Ooh, okay, check this out. I'm gonna drag and drop Dragon Storm into the deck, and then boom, I'm gonna drop a bunch of dragons on the battlefield. A nine drop, huh? Seems ambitious. It was just for the pun. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. Welcome back, everybody. We are upgrading the Miracle Worker pre-con from Duskmorn. We're going to get into the 10 cards to add to this deck using a budget of $50. So we try and keep it manageable, but make sure that there's plenty of room for spice if you really want to kick up this power level of this deck. Uh, the first car thing you mentioned that you wanted to do with this upgrade is just get some more card draw in there. Yeah, more card draw at sort of more interesting times mm -hmm. to take advantage of that miracle, but also just to get more cards in your hand so that even if the miracle plan isn't quite working, mm -hmm. you at least have some options to be looking at. Mm -hmm. So the first section uh, of this upgrade is going to be a lot of card draw stuff. And up first is a card you might be familiar with. It's Fairy Mastermind. Yeah! This thing is going for $14 right now. Definitely one of the sort of bigger spends on the list. Mm -hmm. It's one in a blue for a 2-1 flash flying. Uh, whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you draw a card. Mm -hmm. And for three in a blue, you can have each player draw a card. This is great. I mean, it promises up to one miracle per turn, which sets up so much opportunity for you. Yeah, it really is a thing where, you know, the, the deck, you know, you see it in Surveil and sort of the top deck manipulation. It wants you to time it so that, you know, all right, I find I got my enchantment on top just in time. If you're just drawing a card every turn, you'll hit the enchantments. Like, right. you don't have to worry as much about controlling your top decks. Mm -hmm. It's still good to do, but it's just like... You're drawing, you have so many chances to Miracle, you're just going to hit them often enough. <laughs> that's, that's how miracles work. Yeah. If you put yourself in the, give yourself the opportunity for a miracle. It's a numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one also ups the miracle numbers game. It's like I just stood and waited for a miracle to happen. Yeah, up next, uh, we have a $17 card, the biggest spend of all on the list, mm -hmm. and also one, you just know it, it's Ledger Shredder. Mm -hmm. uh, for the few of you who don't, it's one in a blue for a 1-3 flying, and whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, Ledger Shredder connives, which is drawing and discarding, and mm -hmm. if you discard it on land, it can get bigger. But this, again, you know, the drawing the second card, the casting the second spell, these are things players do in Commander. Yeah. Uh, and this one even has the virtue of you can trigger it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not necessarily the most helpful for miracling if you're doing that on your own turn. Mm -hmm. But this deck can get flashy enough yeah. uh, to sort of even possibly do that on someone else's turn. But yeah, same role in the deck. More chances to miracle, more cards in your hand, period, to deal with whatever's going on. Yeah, I'm, this is a huge chunk of the budget, but they're just the kind of cards that give you the opportunity for your deck to work better. They come down before your commander, which means you're starting to hit draws as soon as Aminatu hits the battlefield. So, like, if you cast her a turn later or something and you have a mana up, you have opportunities to tr use your commander right away. Yeah, Ledger Shredder in particular also has the virtue of it blocks early. It yeah. comes down, it starts growing often right away, mm -hmm. uh, and in a deck that is, I think, sort of out of the box, really weak uh, on defense until sort of at the earliest turn five, mm -hmm. this is very much a card that can change that. Yeah. All right, this next card is in the same category, and you are going to see the theme. It's Talion, the ca kindly lord. For two, a blue and a black, this is a one, three, four, flying fairy noble. As Talion enters the battlefield, choose a number between one and ten. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with that mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and you draw a card. 
Uh, this is this is another thing that just gives you opportunities to draw every single turn. Uh, the big choice is what's the number? And we did a whole episode on that. You should watch it. It's fun. Josh and I do math. It's great. It's yeah. two or three. We've also seen the number chosen by giant inflatable dice. Yeah. You don't have to do that, but boy, if you have the opportunity, it's, it's fun. fun. <laughs> yeah, this one, you know, like we said, it fills the same role. Honestly, uh, with sort of the amount of punching power this deck mm. sort of is lacking, that two life when they sort of trigger this thing is also... The wind gun! <laughs> it's kind of part of the wind gun. It's also a beefy enough flyer that you can just deal some incidental damage that means that not just your life total is going down. Uh, plus, Talion is only $5.50 for a really powerful card that's actually a great value. Yeah. All right, there's one more th uh, in this category that just ups the card draw, ups the opportunity for Miracle with a little bit of value on the side. Yeah, we've got uh, Lauren of the Third Path coming in at the third dollar, a.k.a. three dollars. Uh -huh. uh, two and a white for a 2-1 legendary human artificer, uh, Vigilance. Uh, on ETB, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment, and you can tap to have you and target opponent each draw a card. Lorne is such a slick magic card. It's card draw when you need it, it helps somebody, it's politics when you need it, and it's removal on a body. It just, everyone, I think when she came out, nobody was ready for just how good it feels to have on the battlefield. Yeah, no, this is absolutely just sort of an all-star. Mm. Honestly, great that it's sort of down to three dollars from I sort agree. of a much higher price point that we used to see it at. But yeah, just you know, the deck has a somewhat solid interaction package, but you can always use one more and just the raid on this one is great. Mm -hmm. And there are gonna be times, you know, let's say you haven't drawn either of the three cards that we just talked about, mm -hmm. uh, but you do have some of the top deck manipulation, being able to time exactly when you and that opponent draw that card and you are maybe miracling something mm -hmm. is pretty good instead of these other ones that are sort of purely dependent on what your opponent is doing right. to get that For miracle sure. chance. Yeah, I love the opportunity to be able to like, all right, you're going to combat. I do know that the top of my library is a sphere of resistance, safety, safety. sphere of resistance, something else. Uh, I'm going to cast it now before you go to combat because I know it's there. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, whole thing of Miracles getting around timing restrictions, really when you can time your draws, yeah, you can do some super fun gotcha moments on people. Mm -hmm. You know, even sort of Soaring Lightbringer, like, haha, I have a 4-5 blocking flyer that you didn't think I was going uh, to have. Instant speed, that's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, the, speaking of sphere safety, this next card is in that category, and it also gives you a little bit of board presence. It's Propaganda. Two in a blue for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their cre controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. Stop hitting me, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, just the way the deck is with sort of the mana value of its ramp package mm -hmm. and just the cards in it, the three slot is kind of hurting for something big. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, if you haven't ramped at all and you have a three mana rock, like, play it. You want that mana mm -hmm. over time. But this is one of the stronger things, once it's in the deck, that the deck can do on three, just to buy time. Like, mm -hmm. buying time is kind of the most essential element of this deck. And obviously, mm -hmm. we're trying to add some punching power so you don't need as much time as you did out of the box. But that defense is just crucial in this thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think a lot of people look at a propaganda and it's not usually worth removing until they can actually kill you and it is annoying enough that you're like fine i'll attack somebody else two mana it's, is so much so much especially in those early games when you really need the protection i what i like is it's a thing that you can miracle which is great like a, a two reduction is great off of your commander and it's a thing you can just cast before your commander comes down yeah uh 225 for a propaganda you yes. can obviously uh Add the full set if you'd like to double down on a pillow fort type stuff. Sure. Uh, up next, you know, the deck has some top deck manipulation, but uh, there are sort of some different ways you can go about it that aren't necessarily in the deck that uh, I'm looking to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first one is with a card that, you know, we're moving away from some staples here. <laughs> spicy, spicy tech for Aminatu. It's Penance. You guys know Penance. Uh, this enchantment that costs a meager quarter uh, <laughs> is two and a white, uh, and it says, choose a card from your hand and put that card on top of your library to prevent all damage from a black or red source. So that Wee! putting the card on top is the cost. No one can stop you from doing that. Mm -hmm. It just happens. 
And you can do it whenever you want. Yep. Plus, this is on an enchantment that works with all your enchantress yeah. synergies. It's something you can reduce, and it helps you get your, you know, uh, open the multiverse. Open the multiverse? That the, sounds the right. Big, the big one. Out of your hand and onto the top of your library, so you can... <gasps> a miracle! One with the multiverse. That one I with the definitely multiverse. definitely didn't just go back in the papers <laughs> to find out. Everybody in chat is screaming what the answer is. Yeah, if you commented in that amount of time, honestly, you deserve it. Well that's done, great. first. Yeah, I love Penance. I think that's such a slick... It does a lot of things for the deck, and the fact that it's a cost and can protect your life total a little bit as well is very, very helpful. Yeah, and just sort of, you know, to sort of get ahead of the comments of, is this not redundant mm -hmm. with, you know, your surveilling and figuring out your draws? Ideally, if you're drawing into some of this draw package, you're going to be drawing enough cards per turn that you aren't going to be able to control every single one. So yeah, mm -hmm. if one of those enchantments, a big one with the multiverse type effect, just gets drawn at not quite the ideal time, mm -hmm. this is a great way to make any time the ideal time. For sure. I like this include a lot. Uh, something that we did look up that I want to mention is um, if there isn't a black or red source other than your commander or one of your black or black permanents because yeah. you don't have any red permanents, uh, you do have to choose one of your own permanents. I don't think you're necessarily going to battle with Aminatu all the time, but if let's say there's no black or red on the table except your commander, you do have to choose Aminatu and the next time she would deal damage this turn is prevented. So it's if that comes up, you're in a so wild narrow. situation. That is so narrow. But, but it'll come up once. Every situation comes up once. There's the answer to your question. Yeah. Twenty five cents for penance. Yep. Uh, up next, we have a card that boy did I not realize it was only a dollar. I am obsessed with this card. It just got a reprint, so I think that did help. That will do it. Uh, it's Doom Whisperer. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's three black black for a nightmare demon. Uh, it's a six six with flying and trample and has an ability, pay two life, surveil two. This is great at manipulating the top mm -hmm. card of your deck. You know, if you're being more conservative with your life total, it's just do it until it's an enchantment that I get miracle value from. Right. If you have plenty of life and there's a card you really need, you can just go digging. You can yeah. really dig for sort of one thing, or at the very least, a category of something that you're looking for. Mm. Uh, this card is just really good in something that cares about the top deck. Also really good in things that care about the graveyard, which, you know, we haven't dwelled on a ton of it, but mm -hmm. this deck has a fair amount of things in the recursion category. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, this thing's really just uh, putting in so much work at getting any of your possible engines going. Not to mention it is enormous. Like you, it's very uncommon for people to be able to attack you through a Doom Whisperer. It's a 6-6 six, six flying trample. If you need to start converting some of your value into damage, a big old demon is a good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the flying trample, you're not blocking this thing. Yeah, if I mean, a 6-6 six, six flying trample, that's an absurd right. It is. Um, this card is sweet. It feels incredible anytime you have it. I think I have in three decks right now, and it's awesome in all of them. So yeah. pick up a copy while it's a dollar. That makes a ton of sense to me. Uh, Doom Whisperer helps with that, but we definitely wanted to up the board presence of this deck to be able to convert value into things, into damage, into winningness. That's the word I'm using now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the first one's one of the best enchantments you could put in any deck like this. It's Felidar Retreat. Three and white for an enchantment with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Make a cat or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. I do think people mistake this for a lands card all the time and just don't put it. It's great in this deck. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna play lands. Yeah. You're gonna hit your land drops because, you know, we're upping that card draw and you already have the top deck manipulation to, you know, as much as it sucks to sometimes see that card that would have been so cool go, you can make sure that you are hitting the land drops. That should always be priority one. Absolutely. Uh, you've got a ton of top deck manipulation. An epic manipulation. <laughs> manipulation to hit those land drops, and this just rewards you for it. I don't think you're necessarily going to win the game with a ton of cats that have vigilance, but giving your Doom Whisperer vigilance and being able to smack with it and defend yourself, being able to just make chump blockers every turn defends you very, very well, uh, and just means you can rec recover from a board wipe faster than everybody else.
Yeah, I mean, I think of this card in particular, you know, in conjunction with that soaring lightbringer and all those mm-hmm. like one-one flyers you can make. You know, if you are if you are finding the ways, uh, whether they're ones that exist or ones we're adding to go wide in this deck, mm-hmm. you know, that one-one counter mode can be a pretty substantial speed up to closing out the game for sure. Uh, it goes very well with this next card. Oh, Felidar retreats a dollar seventy-five. This next one's only seventy-five cents, and it pairs very well with it. Yep, we have Archon of Sun's Grace, uh, two white white, so four mana value total for a three four flying lifelink. Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink. My favorite line of text. And of course w- <laughs> they do. Look Why at them. wouldn't they? How could they not? <laughs> uh, and okay, so you need to have them. And whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a two two white Pegasus creature token with flying. Sweet. Um, great board presence. Really, really good with the Soaring Lightbringer. I'm uh, truly absurd. Yeah. There's a lot of things in the deck that go super well with this. Mm -hmm. There are also some that don't. You know, this is full of enchantments that have a high mana value. The deck is not Mm -hmm. designed to sort of have the kind of storm off with enchantments turn that you can get in decks that, you know, frankly, have green and thus have Mm Sithis. But even if you're just getting a couple of these, you know, the life swing of the two twos with flying and lifelink, like, that's great. It buys you time and it you know, eventually does just snowball and end the thing. And apply some amount of pressure, which yeah. this deck is not very good at. For sure. Uh, really good with Felidar Retreat. I love that ad. Surprised it's not in the precon. They love to put that in in this style of precon. Uh, there's one more card that we're adding. And again, this is like win the game, figure out how to slam the door shut type yeah. of card. And this card often either wins or loses you the game, depending hey. on whether a board wipe comes around <laughs> at the wrong time. Uh, it's Starfield of Nyx. It's going for $3. Uh, it's four and a white for an enchantment that says, uh, one, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sick. Two, here we go. As long as you control five or more enchantments, each other non-aura enchantment you control is a creature in addition to its other types and has base power and toughness each equal to its mana value. Sweet. Yep. Decks full of five plus drop enchantments. Turn them into five five plus creatures. Yeah. Uh, There's also sort of a decent number. We've talked about the Soaring Lightbringer a lot, but it's not the only way that the deck can give your board flying. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, having a bunch of big flyers just kind of does it. It's also got the key number four here that can be reduced all the way down to one mana with your commander. It is a little awkward with um, Miracle because this is the kind of card that you may not want to cast at a weird time. Um, But you don't have to Miracle if you Miracle it. You can obviously put it into your hand. And even if you do, if you Miracle this on like an opponent's turn and you untap and get to reanimate something right away, like one of those big enchantments that we're talking about in the deck, there is some self-mill stuff going on. Um, that's a huge swing, too, that can just get you a ton of value, even if you're not necessarily ready to kill everybody with a whole bunch of enchantments. Yeah, it really is a card where the best case scenario is it's one of the easiest ways to sort of surprise people with a win on the spot. Mm -hmm. They can be looking at your board, feel like you have almost no creatures because you have all these sort of static effect or Mm -hmm. triggered ability enchantments. Uh, And then all of a sudden this comes down, it's like, oh, wait, you have seven six sixes, let's say. Mm Uh, But yeah, even just having a few, just getting that steady damage, even getting that steady defense. Again, your enchantments are susceptible to creature removal now, Mm -hmm. but, you know, so is everything else. And at least now they can block, which they certainly couldn't before. (laughs) (laughs) I like this include a lot. It's only $3. Plus, it puts you in a very unique position of being able to beat someone to death with propaganda. Exactly. (laughs) A thing that never happens in society. (laughs) All right, that is our upgrade. Those are the 10 cards we're adding with a grand total of $48.50. Down to the wire, saved you $1.50. You can you can take that home with you. Yeah. Put, put in the comments what you're spending your $1.50 on. Yeah, invest it. <laughs> invest it. Uh, those are the 10 cards we are adding to the deck, which means, of course, we are going to have to take 10 cards out. Uh, we did want to mention before we get to the cuts that there are a lot of cards in the main set that go very well in this deck. Yeah, I mean, the eerie keyword Mm -hmm. shows up on a lot of stuff. We have eerie draw a card. We have eerie make a 3-1 with flying. Uh, Eerie, for anyone who may not be following the main set uh, as closely, is basically Constellation Plus. It's Mm -hmm. uh, an ability that triggers whenever an enchantment enters or whenever you fully unlock a room. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, 
going to happen even more often than Constellation. There's a few room cards in this deck. Fill this, yeah, yeah, fill this deck with miracle rooms. How did that room exist? But it's yeah, a miracle. A lot of fun new tricks. We have enchantment uh, cost reducers. Just, uh, just look through all the blue and white cards in the set. When you miracle a room... They're both reduced and you get to cast you get to cast one side and then you can unlock the other, which is obviously for its regular cost, right? Yes, that is my understanding as well. Okay. So you get to pick which side. They're both reduced by your commander and then the regular room mechanics apply from there. Yeah. One other fun room fact mm -hmm. uh, in looking at extravagant replication and it's just making copies of stuff. Making a copy of a room is bad because both of those rooms are locked. Oh, so you have to un. So if you copy it, they're both locked, and then you have to unlock them yeah. for their full mana value. For their full Wild. Mana value. Okay. Well, that's good for you to know if you're buying this. Yeah. Believe, All right. I certainly believe that is true. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, it's a cast trigger, right? Is unlocking yeah. the room, and if you're making a copy of it, then you're not. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get into the cuts. We got a number of cards that we are taking out of this deck uh, to make room for the cool new ones. Yeah, the first one, I wouldn't say we have to cut it. I'd say we get to cut it. Uh, <laughs> I agree. It's Arvanox the Mind Flail, uh, our universes within version of Mind Flayer the Shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a seven drop, including three black pips uh, for a nine nine Sometimes a creature that basically steals cards from the bottom of your opponent's deck that you can cast at full price later. You don't care what's on the bottom of their library. Yeah. You don't need that. They're not playing an Enchantress deck. Yeah. It's, Maybe. Um, it, this is the kind of, it's like a theft type of card, or it's a reanimator type of card. It's, it's not necessarily going to actually further your plan in this deck at all. Yeah, and you know, I think you know, big, cool, splashy stuff that is swingy mm. is fun. Honestly, my biggest issue with this is, you know, we're working with a pre-con mana base here. Right. I ran into multiple times gold fishing where I could have miracled this if I had the three black pips, but what because it's so color intensive, mm. you know, I have three mana, but I still can't. So here's this seven drop that is stuck in my hand. And even if I get to seven mana, who knows if three of it is going to be black. Right. Yeah, I, I don't love Arvanox in this deck. I actually ran it in my reanimator deck for a long time, and it was really obnoxious because a lot of the ways to reanimate it are auras, which don't stay on enchantments. Great. <laughs> so you can't, like, just, it doesn't work very well in a lot of things. Uh, up next, we're cutting Auramancer. This is a little human wizard that returns a, a, an enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, the deck just kind of doesn't need to do this. It has no. other recursion that's sort of more efficient and interesting. Yeah, uh, it's a Keeper of Keys card for sure. Yeah, I don't think that this card is actively bad, but it's just a thing that we can do better than. Uh, and because, you know, you're bringing the card back to your hand, unless you have one of those sort of top deck fixers mm -hmm. that's then going to yeah. put it back on top of your library, that's a lot of steps to go through to get one of like the big splashy enchantments to work. You know, you'd almost rather a card that put it directly from graveyard on top of your library mm -hmm. in this deck, at least in some cases. For sure. Uh, up next, we're cutting Thirst for Meaning. This is draw three, then discard a, a two cards. Unless one of those cards is an enchantment, then you only have to discard one. It's fine, but... It's not an enchantment, so it harms the synergy of the deck, and it's kind of expensive, so it makes it a little awkward for the miracle. Yeah. So to draw one, is it a miracle, then the other two, then discards? Yeah, great. and even if you do miracle with this on someone else's turn, you paid three to do this. You're right. not get really getting that much sort of cost reduction overall if that was your intent with casting the card. Yeah, I would rather just have an opt. Exactly. And yeah, I, th I think also often you are discarding the two cards because there isn't that much sort of recursion. And mm -hmm. I, I'm aware that I am just cutting one mm -hmm. uh, for the enchantments in your graveyard. So it's like, it's just not a great rate sort mm -hmm. of in any respect in this deck. Speaking of not a great rate, we're cutting Burnish Chart. You have a four mana commander. If you cast your ramp on three and then have to pay three more to activate it, you haven't ramped into the plan. It's just awkward in the curve. Yeah, with how the deck is sort of curved out, uh, if you have... If you're relying on this to ramp, you have lost the game. Mm -hmm. uh, up next, uh, sort of, a, again, just something that's a little expensive for what you get nowadays, a Return to Dust. It's a four-mana instant that can uh, exile one artifact or enchantment if you cast it at instant speed, or two if you cast it uh, during your own main phase. It's fine. 
It's just, you know, Lauren came in, uh, this card, four mana for removal that encourages you to play it during your own main phase. Mm. It's just not really what you want to be doing with any card that says instant on it. Mm. Just doesn't feel like it gets there. Yeah, I agree. I haven't run Return to Dust in a long time. Yeah. Uh, up next, we're cutting Prognostic Sphinx. This is a five mana Sphinx that says discard a card. It gains hexproof until end of turn. Tap it. And when it attacks, scry three. Ah, that's what we're doing. We're scrying three after we've drawn our first card for turn. Yeah, I have a scry deck this isn't in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too slow. It's not an enchantment. It doesn't have anything to do with the deck. I think it's in here just for board presence, and we put better board presence in. Yeah, exactly. You don't need that for your top deck manipulation. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Dream Eater. Uh, this one's a six drop flash. Uh, it does a bunch of things. It surveils and it bounces something. It's sort of removal and top deck remo- manipulation mm-hmm. and some graveyard shenanigans. But it's six and it's not an enchantment. You're yeah. n- you cannot miracle it. Uh, it's just you can get all the things that it does at a much better rate. Yeah, if you're reanimating this, if you're blinking this, that's the kind of deck that this feels good in. In this deck, it's a little bizarre. Uh, moving right along, we're cutting her augury. We're taking it away. Uh, I'm so sorry, Ami, not to. Your augury is not an enchantment or a miracle. It's six blue, blue, exile the top eight cards of your library. You may put a land from among them onto the battlefield. Till end of turn for each non-land card type, you may cast a spell of that type from among the exiled cards without paying its mana cost. This is a little weird in a deck that's focused on, on one, one type. type. Yeah, you know, it's there because Aminatu is the face commander. It's yeah. a flavor include. It's got some cool new art. Yeah. Honestly, it would be kind of cool in the deck is original Aminatu herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, And I think, honestly, the main reason she maybe doesn't already appear is just, I feel like in three plus color decks especially, they like to have the face commander, the backup commander, and no other cards in the deck that mm-hmm. could be the commander sure, of the deck. Yeah. So you really get to explore those two new ones. Mm-hmm. But, you know, sort of... Belated honorable mention, I guess. I'm not too original version. Yeah, put her in. She's sweet. And it'll help you get stuff on top of your library. Yeah. Uh, up next is a new card. This is Phenomenon Investigators. Is this a Scooby-Doo reference? What are we doing? Uh, we're referencing, I think, basically anything Ghost Hunters adjacent. Yeah, I suppose. Two blue black for a creature human detective. It's a 3-4. When it enters, choose Believe or Doubt. Oh, we're referencing X-Files. <laughs> Oh, yeah, of course. (laughs) I mean, we're not, but believe or doubt, come on. My cat's literally named Scully. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Believe, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 black horror enchantment creature token. Okay. Uh, Doubt, at the beginning of your end step, you may return an on-land permanent you control, excuse me, to you own to your hand if you do draw a card. It does a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. And I I don't know that any of the stuff is exactly what this deck enables or wants. Yeah. Believe you want enchantment creatures. You have things that care about enchantments, but you don't have this like engine to loop your non-token creatures dying. You know, it's, it's sort of an okay replacement for probably something way better that just happened to die. You're not sacking it yourself. Yeah. Uh, And then the doubt mode... You know, you have these big Huge, enchantments that you miracle. Things. Like, bouncing one of those to your own hand to draw a card, there are very few things in the deck that sort of incentivize bouncing them so you uh-huh. can cast them again. There's a non-zero amount, but nowhere near enough for this card to be in the deck as a way to enable that small handful of shenanigans. Yeah, especially on your end step, it doesn't even... If, if it was, like, on your opponent first opponent's upkeep or something like that, now it triggers a miracle, and I sort of get it, but... Uh, Yeah, this doesn't work very well with Aminatu. It's a neat card, and I'm sure it'll show up in a different deck. Yeah, both modes feel like they lend themselves to different cool strategies. Neither of those strategies are this one. Uh, Finally, we're losing Otherworldly Gaze. Yeah, it's a one-drop. It surveils three. You can flash it back. Uh, This was the last one that I sort of like decided to cut, and it was a close call, just because the mana curve of this deck was so high that mm-hmm. cutting a one-drop just kind of felt bad in my soul. Sure, yeah. But it's a one-drop that sort of, it's top deck manipulation, and that's it. You're going down a card just to sort of reorder and maybe graveyard mm-hmm. the top cards of your deck. Uh, you only really care about doing that if you have Aminatu out, and if you have Aminatu out, she's doing it for you anyway with her right. upkeep trigger. It's just not worth a whole card in your deck 
to just be doing this. This also feels like a Master of Keys style deck. If you're using it to mill and like fix like your next draw, I s- it's closer to worth a card. I agree, it's not worth a card in Amiatu. Yeah, and it's and a I, card I like very much. Yeah, I'd agree with that. If you yeah. are if you are going full graveyard, if you are doing a Master of Keys thing, like mm-hmm. this is great. But that's not what we're doing. Yeah. All right, that's it. Ten cards in, ten cards out. Um, if you want to test out this deck in its upgraded form, go to Architect. We will have the list with the all of the upgrades in there. You can play it. You can make your own changes if you'd like. Just copy the deck list and give it a try. Their playtester rules is a good way to get to know a deck before you buy it or before you upgrade it. That being said, what can people who are playtesting the deck expect from it? Well, hopefully now you're just having more things to do early, whether mm-hmm. it's those sort of two-drop card draw staples or mm-hmm. propaganda to keep you safe. Uh, and then, you know, once Aminatu out, it is sort of time to party. Hopefully mm-hmm. you're drawing enough cards and miracling enough cool stuff that can actually put a board presence out there that you're just getting this sort of steady value engine and saving a lot of mana at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, the absolute dream that, you know, if you have this gold fishing wow, you are a lucky person, mm-hmm. let alone in a real game, is you save 16 mana in one turn rotation Whoa. by drawing a card on each person's turn, and each of them is an enchantment that you can miracle with a cost reduction of four. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting conversation, is is how does this deck actually win? And it's just by drowning your opponents in sheer mana saved. Um, the goal is to have twice as much you know, mana value on your board as your opponents do and just have bigger, higher quality things. And hopefully you can convert the higher quality things into a win. That may mean taking chip damage with your six, six flyers. That may mean draining people out, um, with various effects, or there's like certain token makers that are in the deck that uh, it's got in Treat the Angels too. That's sort of yeah. like a miracle that wins all at once. Um, but it's going to be kind of a grind fest because it's a slow, overwhelming uh, wave. Yeah, it, it's a deck that really encourages you to sort of use all parts of the buffalo, so to yeah. speak, mm-hmm. uh, with every card that you play. Like, don't forget that your Doom Whisperer can attack. Don't forget that you like mm-hmm. all the tokens you make. Every part of every card is really going to matter just because the strategy, it doesn't have the most inherent punching power. You Mm -hmm. have to kind of find it. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully you are stringing together that value, getting that cost reduction. And with some of these includes building out that board that can sort of serve as defense and offense as necessary. For sure. It's going to be a slow grind with this one, as it often is with Esper decks. But you can do some really cool things and get some big, splashy enchantments onto the board, which there often isn't room for in these sort of stormy green-based enchantment decks that we've talked about in the past. Yeah, it's a good chance to sort of see and get some sort of increased value out of Mm -hmm. the big, fun enchantments that maybe you haven't run or even really seen on the table in a while. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Anikthia already, but it is sort of closer to an Anikthia style deck where it's like not reanimator, but it's still the theory is the same as those big um, mana saving uh, strategies. So you get big stuff into play. So take a look at that deck, especially the black and white parts of that deck. Uh, to you can see. look at the green part for fun. It, yeah, to admire. Yeah. Um, Cool. I mean, not too sweet. This is a new style of enchantment deck that we've uh, than we've seen in a precon before. No green means you got to get a little creative, and that means makes for a very cool and unique deck. Yeah, also a fun sort of new take on really making top deck manipulation matter with just giving things miracle at all. Mm-hmm. It's just a it's a cool mechanic. It's it cool. feels good to do for sure. Uh, all right, to the listeners, what do you think of this precon? Any cards we missed to add? Any cards we suggested to take out or add that you disagree with? That you, are you against shredding ledgers? You might be. It's illegal. You know, that's fair. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you think of this deck in the comments. If you're building it, uh, talk to us about it. But if, People are commenting on this video. They're interested in this deck. So be a part of the community. We appreciate it so much. Uh, if you want to pick up any of the singles or this deck that we talked about today, go to carkingdom.com slash command. Car Kingdom has all of the precons for Duskmorn plus the sealed product, if that's how you shop for magic cards. 
I like using Card Kingdom when I'm buying a deck because I can get a ton of the cards that I'm looking for in one place. When I've built something and I've started to shop for the cards, I get itchy. I want the cards to arrive now. And if they show up in bits and pieces, it's frustrating. So I love that there's one big package coming in the mail with all the cards I'm looking for in the condition that I ordered them in, in the version that I ordered them in. There's no confusion on foils and that kind of stuff. Card Kingdom knows magic cards and they know how to ship them so they can get them to you just how you ordered them. Again, go to cardkingdom.com slash command uh, to support the show and pick up some cool new cards for your decks. Maybe you're building Master of Keys. Cool. Uh, then... Go to ultrapro.com slash command to get a playmat or sleeves or a deck box for your new deck. They've got all of the officially licensed art from Wizards of the Coast, from Duskmorn, from Bloomborough, depending on what kind of person you are, what you're into. Go take a look at their huge selection. They also get secret layer drops, which are really, really fun. So if there's a secret layer that you're into and you like the art and you want it even bigger, go check the Ultra Pro website just real quick and see if they have them on a playmat. I've gotten two of my very favorite playmats that way from Ultra Pro. Uh, if you want to be informed when they're on the website, sign up for their newsletter. They'll send you an email that says they've got new stuff in. They've got big sales. Uh, make sure that you're on the up and up because things go out of stock very quickly because they're cool. So ultrapro.com slash command. Before we go, we're going to uh, talk about something outside the world of magic. We've talked a lot about magic today. Uh, what are you doing that isn't magic related, Jamie? Uh, I'm playing a game called Poke Rogue, which mm. uh, I am a few months late to when it was really having its trending moment. Yeah. And when this comes out, it'll be further it'll be still. Even later. <laughs> but it's new to me, and this is my first chance to tell you about it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a Pokemon game. Yeah. Uh, you can play it totally in browser. It's just PokeRogue.net. Oh, net. oh interesting. Uh, and you make an account that it's saved so you can, it's easy to go between like my computer here and my computer at home. Even sure. your phone can do it. Yeah. Uh, and it is a roguelite, thus the name. Sure, yeah. So you sort of pick a team of starters at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and sort of Canlander style, all the starters have different point values, and you can only do so many uh, points. Okay. And as you go on your run, uh, you know, when you catch a Pokemon, not only is it added to your sort of team for that run, it is now a starter unlocked for your future runs. Sweet, so, okay. You that get, makes sense. Yeah, and there's more elements where, like, there's new items that are sort of designed solely to work for this format. The game is only battles. There's mm -hmm. no walking around between towns. It's just round after round, wave oh, after God. wave of battles. I keep getting stuck in corners <laughs> and being like, have I been here before? This looks exactly the same as I've You no before. longer have to worry about whether the slowpoke have gotten over their headache and cleared <laughs> the route. There are no routes. But no, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, it's definitely, you know, you, you can go back and relive the moment it had on YouTube <laughs> 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 if you want. Uh, it is a very fun game for content. I definitely got into playing it after just seeing a ton of people sure, playing yeah. it on streams. Sure, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just it's a great game for scratching that itch, and it's a super great game for being able to you know play for a minute, walk away from you got to do something else. Mm -hmm. uh, just whenever you have those five minutes to kill between things, nice. if you're a Pokemon fan, it's gotcha. All right, Poke Rogue, go check it out, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Before we go, we're going to say thank you to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. Thank you to Eric Lem, Rachel Kendra, Gaurav Galati, Jordan Pridgen, Jake Boss, Josh Murphy, Manson Lung, Karina Cruz, Jared Robinson, Sebastian Salazar, Evan Limberger, Sam Waldo, Josh Lequai, Jimmy Wong, and Jamie Block. Hello! For doing this upgrade. I've been here the whole time. Thanks for taking the time to talk about Aminatu and pick out some fun new enchantments for this deck. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Hopefully I was a miracle worker. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>